Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah A question was asked from one of our brothers in Germany and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless us in him with ilm al-nafi, rizqan tayyib wa amal al-muttaqabbilan And bless us with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said that at one time he was a takfiri and supportive of many groups, many of the takfiri groups. But by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that now he is Salafi, he's moved away from extremism and from deviancy and deviating in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he said that he had a question about Imam Salibin Fuzan Hafadullahu Ta'ala about his position with regards to the Taliban. And he mentioned a fatwa which I haven't read uh, from, he said, 2004 that Imam Fozan had praised of the Taliban or praised the action of the Taliban for destroying those statues that they did, those Buddhist statues when they be, uh, had come into power in various parts of Afghanistan. And so he said he found confusion with that. And so I, what I want us to gain as a benefit and hopefully provide some clarification in regards to this matter in general. Something that we can take away and apply in our deen. And so first and foremost, we have to know and understand something that I've emphasized many times, which is that Ahlul Sunnah, Tafawit, and Ahlul Bid'ah, Tafawit. That Ahlul Sunnah has different levels. The scholars have different levels because of their knowledge and their practice. And all the way down to the average person, if you want to say the lay persons or, what, or whatever, that the average person has a different level of their understanding of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and their adherence to it. So, and all of them could be Sunni or Salafi, but they have different levels due to their understanding. So you don't judge. This is something very important because a lot of times the people want to judge the common person who's a new Muslim or even a, a Muslim who was born Muslim or even a Muslim who just tries to adhere to the Sunnah but they're not a student of knowledge, they're not a da'i, they're not any, you know, anything like that. They're just your average brother or sister in the masjid and they want to judge them like they judge the ulama and that's a mistake. And as we said, Ahlul Sunnah madha tafawit wa Ahlul Bidah tafawit. The Ahlul Sunnah has different levels and Ahlul Bid'ah has different levels. So, likewise, the Mubtadi'ah, that someone who innovates in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, you have those who call to Bid'ah and then you have those who are affected with Bid'ah, but they will quickly change their position if, they are, if it's clarified to them and they respect you for knowledge. So, sometimes you'll have the average, your average brothers and sisters, you wouldn't say, oh, he's, he's a Mubtadi'ah. He's not Salafi. No, he's trying to follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah to the best of his, his ability. He's not a student of knowledge. He doesn't study. But he generally accepts the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he has many mistakes because he doesn't study. So he might even have aspects he shares with Khwana Muslimin. And he might even be enticed by some Sufi practices. And he might even have some, even some issues of takfir because he doesn't know. So he's, he's ignorant in regards to those issues. So do you quickly say that he's a Mubtadiya? No, that's wrong. And so that's why we have to understand, and everyone's on different levels, in the, and so we're not saying this is just in general, I'm giving you a general picture, so that you know that people have different levels and people are not, don't always fit into a nice and neat categorization as the people want things to be made out. Getting back to the Mas'ala of Imam Fozan, or before we get to that, we need to lay another foundation principle down. And that is that 
even the Mubtadi'ah, mostly, as long as they're in the fold of Islam, that of course they have something correct with them. Any group that you name to me right now, that is in the fold of Islam, I'm not talking about those who have bid'ah mukaffara, but I'm saying even the takfiris, I'm saying even uh, ikhwan al-Muslimin, I'm saying even somebody who's sururi, we don't praise them and we're not pleased with their bid'ah and we believe that they're mubtadi'ah, but they would only be able to attract people if they had something correct from their ideology. This is what we learn from the ulama and this is just common, commonly known in the religion. So for example, it would be so easy to rebuke someone if everything they did was bid'ah. It would be very easy, but that's not the case. You'll find so much haq with Ashadis in general that they agree with Ahl Sunnah on many principles. Not the extreme Ashadis, but, but, you're, but uh, those who are not tainted with uh, some of the extreme Sufi practices and, and so forth. But you'll find things, some issues perhaps in the Iman, some issues in, in other that they might overlap with Ahl Sunnah. So if he says a kalimat a haq, he says something of the truth, then you can't reject that because he, saw, he said the truth. That's the important, the ibrah is, is the truth. The proof, the, 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 the important thing is the proof. It's not about just a, a label and so forth. We don't say, oh, this Salafi brother said, this Sufi said, but we look to their qawl with the haq. If the Sufi was correct in this one issue, because he had more knowledge than the Salafi who was speaking, we have to take what the Sufi said. That's the haq. He called you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to take that haq. That doesn't mean you follow him and you join his group, his organization, that. But the point is, is that Islam teaches us to follow kalimat al haq, the truth. So, with that being the case, Imam Fozan, if this is a true statement about him, then he found that to be something praiseworthy to destroy those Buddhist statues because that's a form of uh, a means to idol worship. You know, having statues and stuff. So the Imam felt that maybe there was benefit. Others might say even though there is goodness in destroying idols and things that are worshipped besides Allah, maybe there's going to be a greater harm by destroying those. So another alim may disagree with that. But that does not mean he's praising the Taliban. So that's what I wanted. You, that's why I wanted to establish these foundations for you to understand that doesn't mean because uh, a scholar. That doesn't mean now he's off the Sunnah, or there should be some questions around him, or there should be some questions even around that group. Are they really on the on the on the haq? No, because no one from the people of Bidah, mostly we could say. No one from the people of Bid'ah, we're talking about Bid'ah, Ghayr al-Mukafara, is on battle in every situation. For example, Jamaat uh, al We believe it's a Mubtadiyah organization. And our scholars and so on and so forth make Tibdi of their scholars because they are their asl is a Sufi, Turk and so forth. But that, does that mean that's battle that they call to the prayer? No. Does it mean it's battle that they want to get together in the masjids, in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dhikr? No. But it's their, it's their madhab, it's their methodology of doing so. It's how they implement and distort Islamic principles, meaning that some of the things have a, a, an asl in the deen, but yet the way that they have uh, practiced it is incorrect. So I hope that that's clear and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.